Hello, welcome to the channel Why Stories. Enjoy watching. The rain was beating with heavy drops on the windshield, but Jordy paid no attention to it, only turning on the wipers of the cab to see the road. He was in a hurry to pick up an important passenger. He kept thinking about what he had achieved in this life. Frowning, Jordy couldn't even recall any happy moments. He had long worked as a cab driver, but his boss hated him and provided him with a very old car. Stopping at a traffic light, Jordy thought, why didn't I choose a different profession? Now I wouldn't be working as a pathetic driver. The light turned green, and Jordy started driving again. But then he heard a pounding under the hood. The car almost broke down, and his boss would say it was Jordy's fault. He would blame him for the breakdown and make him pay for the repairs. No, that wasn't the life Jordy wanted. But there was nothing he could do about it because he was not local and had not yet made the right connections. Sad thoughts kept haunting him. He even remembered how often the cab operator had given good expensive orders to local drivers and not to him and he was left with nothing. Such injustice depressed Jordy and made him think that he made the wrong choice in life. He was an orphan and could only rely on his own strength in any situation. After driving through two more intersections, Jordy wanted to turn into an alley to shorten his way. But suddenly, a pregnant girl jumped out in front of his car. She deliberately swung her hands as if she were falling and blocked the road. Jordy cursed. Have you lost your mind? Tired of living? He couldn't understand why this stranger had almost thrown herself under the car, risking her life. He got out of the car and yelled at her again. Are you bored with your life? I'm in a hurry to pick up a passenger. My boss will eat me alive if I'm late. Couldn't you go through the underpass? The girl sat down on the curb and burst into tears. Jordy realized that he shouldn't say that. She was pregnant and he didn't know why she decided to run across the road. Maybe she was in a hurry to get somewhere too. What if she had contractions? What should he do then? All these thoughts flashed in his mind. He felt guilty and suggested that poor woman to get into his car. Come on, get in the car. It looks like the rain has no plans to stop. Once in the car, the girl looked at him suspiciously. Jordy even sensed some kind of danger or something. It was as if not a human, but a ghost got into his car. He pushed the thoughts away, held out his hand to her, and said, My name is Jordy. I'm a cab driver. And the girl said something he didn't expect to hear. And I am Blanca, a former inmate. Jordy sensed danger again. But this time, it was even worse. He got very nervous. Suddenly, he thought, I shouldn't have let her in the car. Blanca noticed the trembling in his hands and hurried to reassure him. Calm down, I'm just a former inmate, and there's nothing wrong with that unless you're against the fact that women can also be in jail. No, no, answered Jordy excitedly. I hadn't even thought of that. Anything can happen in life, uh, even if I can't tell what will happen to me tomorrow. The pregnant passenger put her hand on the driver's shoulder and quietly said, I'm not a psychic, so I can't answer what will happen to you tomorrow but I am sure that a new life will begin for you in the nearest future. Blanca's words sounded somehow unexpected to Jordy. He suddenly thought that tomorrow, or after tomorrow, his boss would find a reason to punish him again. Then, a new life would really begin, without money and perhaps, and without a job. Jordy thought about this and at the same time remembered his childhood. He had never known his parents. He had been in an orphanage since birth. 
she has never known love or care. The caregivers often left the orphanage for the whole day and left the children without supervision. That was where Jordy learned to survive without relying on anyone. He hardly had any friends. His sense of justice made him an outcast among his peers. They were always doing all kinds of crap, ran away from the orphanage, and Jordy, feeling a sense of fear, was left alone. He didn't follow them, so he never had any friends. The orphanage was in a small village, and Jordy didn't know what was going on outside the village, but he dreamed of getting out of the walls he hated as soon as possible. He wanted to go somewhere where he could be respected and loved. But where to? There are no relatives, and even if he has some relatives, they don't care about his existence. The orphanage caregivers kept telling him that his parents had abandoned him. After that, he didn't want to get close to anyone, and the desire to be loved was just a child's fantasy. As long as there was an opportunity, and the state helped, Jordy got his driver's license. He knew it would help him earn money in the future. In any case, he didn't see any other opportunities for himself. Soon, he moved from the remote village to the capital city. He wanted to find a job and somehow find a foothold in the city. He visited dozens of companies before he found a job. The only vacancy was in cab service, and his boss was an arrogant man, Alvaro Coronado. Also, Jordy rented an apartment on the outskirts of the city. However, the tension between him and his boss made him nervous all the time. There was not a day without Alvaro scolding him for no reason. Sometimes, Jordy felt like he became an outcast, and there was no chance to improve the situation unless he quit. However, he wasn't going to quit, and decided that he would try to prove by his actions how useful he could be. And once Jordy even dared to say what they could use to boost their efficiency, but he said it to the CEO of the company, and Alvaro heard it. Then the conversation turned to new motor oil, and Jordy joked that he knew as much about it as a professional. The CEO praised the guy for his initiative, but Alvaro was angry. It wasn't he who had proposed a good idea, and now the CEO would not praise him in front of other employees. But there was nothing Alvaro could do, especially since Jordy had become a good friend of the CEO. At the same time, Alvaro just waited for the right moment to get revenge. But Jordy worked so well that he didn't give any reason to be punished. But after today's ride, everything can happen. When Alvaro sent him on this ride, he even grinned evilly. But then Jordy was distracted from his memories and looked at his passenger. If it's no secret, which month? The seventh month. The delivery is coming soon. Blanca answered with a smile. Jordy stopped before the traffic light again. And I'll probably never have children. I'm alone, like a wolf. And I still haven't found my life partner. And probably never will, because I no longer trust people. You have everything ahead of you. You just have to believe, she said. If you want to, you can change your life. I can see that you're a kind and sincere guy, and people like that. You just don't want to see it and think that no one cares about you. Maybe you're right, and I do need to change something in my life. Jordy answered with a shrug. Blanca said she would definitely pay for the ride, but she needed to get to the right address. Then she named the street and the building number. Jordy shook his head and said, Come on, I'm not asking to pay. I know you don't have any money. Do you know how many passengers like you I've met? What are you talking about? All they said was, wait, I'll get the money at home and pay for the ride. And when I drove them to the address, they'd run away. No, you don't have to lie. And there's no reason to. I won't take any money from you. I'll give you a free ride. 
The girl bowed her head and almost whispered. I am not a beggar, if that's what you mean. Yes, I spent enough time in a place where people only think about freedom. But that doesn't mean I've lost my human form and can't take responsibility for my actions. You're wrong, and I'll prove it to everyone. She spoke in some sort of innuendo again. And how does he understand her? Jordy raised his eyebrows and jokingly replied, All right, have it your way, but keep in mind that I won't take you any farther than the address you told me. I need to pick up another passenger, and I need to be on time. Blanca nodded, and they drove in silence for the next half hour. Jordy looked at the road, and the girl looked at her knees. She didn't cry, only her shoulders quivered. Fixing her hair, Blanca looked at Jordy and smiled. He did the same, but discreetly, as if he were afraid of an unexpected turn of events. Finally, when they arrived, Jordy noticed that it was a bank. He immediately joked about it. Don't you dare rob a bank. I don't want to be arrested with you. Blanca waved her hand and got out of the car. Jordy, as promised, did not take any money from her. He realized that in this situation, she had no extra money. Not only was she pregnant, but she had recently been released from jail. And as she walked to the bank building, he kept looking after her. Jordy was waiting to see what would happen next. He had already mentally imagined that sirens would be blaring and that police and ambulance cars would be arriving. But five minutes passed and there was silence all around, people going about their business and no alarms. After making sure that Blanca wasn't going to rob the bank, he hit the gas and drove on. But barely past the intersection, Jordy tapped his hand on the dashboard and said, Crap, another breakdown. And an important passenger is waiting for me. Now the passenger would complain to his boss, and Alvaro would leave me without money. He arrived late. The passenger didn't say anything, but he looked at Jordy with a disgruntled look. It was enough to know that Alvaro would scold him. He was silent all the way, afraid to utter a word, and the client was in no hurry to talk, staring at his tablet. After a couple of hours, Jordy headed to the office. His heart clutched at the feeling of worthlessness. After all, he wouldn't even be able to say anything to his boss, and Alvaro would be right if he punished him. Although there was hope that the client would not start complaining, he left his car in the parking lot and ran into the office building. Iker walked past him and smiled evilly. There was a constant feud between them. Iker got the best and most expensive orders. Rumor had it that he was pleasuring Alvaro Coronado with his own methods. When Jordi thought about it, he immediately felt uncomfortable, and all his hatred for Iker was reflected in his face. His eyebrows were drawn together and his mouth was twisted. The boss came out of his office to meet him. Ah, Jordi, you're just in time. By the way, I can tell by your face that you're upset about something. Is everything all right? Let me guess. You hate me, that's why you frowned? Well, come with me. You're about to get even angrier. Well, that's it. You can't expect anything good after that. Jordy got nervous and went into the office. There was a massive desk in front of the window and a shabby chair next to it. Strangely, the interior of the office had somehow changed drastically. Before, there had been flowers on the windowsill, but now there were none, and the chair was different. This one looked like it came from a junkyard. Jordy turned toward the boss and met his smirking gaze. Yes, this is your future interior. I purposely brought this chair here. You have to see what hopelessness and poverty are like. Do you have any idea why I do this? No, I guess you just have an inordinate sense of humor. Jordy replied with a shiver in his voice. You're somewhat right answered Alvaro, patting him on the shoulder. I can make jokes sometimes, 
but not in your case. I know you were late today. Did you think that if you left for another city with another passenger, I wouldn't know about it? I'm sorry, Alvaro, but I've been stuck in traffic several times, and the car keeps breaking down. Jordy excused himself the best he could, but he still knew that it was useless. And if the boss had staged the spectacle, he did it to please his self-esteem. Alvaro was very arrogant. He could spend hours looking in the mirror and adjusting his tie. He probably loved himself more than anyone else. Pointing to a chair, the boss invited Jordy to sit down. No thank you, he answered nervously and clenched his hands into fists. Well, okay. I put a tracking device in your car. I knew it would work well for me. What are you talking about, Alvaro? Jordy, I saw your whole route. You stopped a few times. Then you went through alleys. You even managed to end up near a bank. Don't tell me you had an account in that bank and wanted to check it out. Jordy felt even more nervous when he heard about the bank. After all, he had joked with Blanca that she should not rob it. Had she robbed it? Is he now an accomplice to robbery? Trying to chase the thought away, Jordy frantically asked, Did you see anything else? No, but that's not enough to punish you. I just don't know how to do it, so you'll remember it for the rest of your life. Let me just pay the fine, said Jordy, pleadingly. That's not enough. You won't learn your lesson that way, Alvaro replied angrily. And just when he said this, Iker entered the office without a knock on the door. He looked at his boss and unashamedly asked, Well, didn't you tell him? I don't understand. What is going on? Jordy approached Iker and stared intently into his face. You're getting fired, buddy. Iker replied cheerfully and gloatingly. Jordy turned his attention back to Alvaro. But you can't do this to me. I've done so much for you. I've always accepted the most difficult and cheapest rides. You crossed my path once, the boss said sternly. You shouldn't have to show off in front of the CEO. He stopped paying me bonuses because of you. Do you think I can forgive you? No, Jordy, you're wrong. You're fired. Get your last paycheck, and I never want to see you again. Jordy lowered his head and slowly walked away from the boss's office. But suddenly, he stopped and looked at Iker. Life will put everything in its place. An old and shabby chair by the table caught his eye. Jordy thought, Blanca was right when she said that things were about to change in my life. After that, he didn't want to stay in that office. Jordy went into the accounting department took the rest of the money, and left the building. The wind blew in his curls, and he stared silently into the void. The frightening uncertainty was ahead of him. Suddenly, the bank came to mind, and Jordy shuddered again. What if she really did rob it, and Alvaro let me go on purpose, and then the cops would come? Shaking his head, the cab driver walked to the bus stop. Now he could only afford public transportation. And if he did not find a job soon, he would have to walk. But he had no idea where to find a job. Jordy has not mastered any other profession, has no college degree, and has no experience. It turns out that he is a man with no experience and no education. He felt nauseous and he could hardly keep from crying. People passing by turned around, thinking the man was not all right. Jordy was standing at the bus stop and whispering something to himself. Meanwhile, several buses had already passed in the right direction, and only an elderly lady holding a heavy bag suddenly stopped in front of him. Mister, why are you so sad? The weather is fine, the rain has stopped, and the sun is shining. Yes, you're right. The weather is fine. But it doesn't cheer me up. I got fired today. 
just because I crossed my boss. Squinting her left eye, that lady came closer and whispered, Don't worry, you didn't do it on purpose. You'll have your day. But remember, when your day comes, do not turn it away. It's your destiny. Are you in cahoots with everyone else? Jordy asked angrily. All I hear is secrets and hints. Who can finally tell me what is going on here? While he waved his hands trying to get an answer, the elderly lady already had time to disappear around the corner. It was as if she had only appeared for a moment to share another secret with Jordy. Completely perplexed, he got on the bus and drove home. He bought bread and a carton of milk at the store. He knew Luna was waiting for him. And as soon as the lock on the door clicked, the cat immediately ran out into the hallway. She leaned on his legs and began to cuddle and purr. After stroking the pet, the former cab driver said, You're the only one who wants to see me, Luna. The cat purred when she heard her name. Jordy took off his shoes, walked to the kitchen, and poured milk into a bowl for her. Luna left his legs alone and walked to the bowl with milk. With her head down to the milk, she looked sideways at her master and licked her mouth. There was so much love and devotion in her eyes that Jordy could not stand it and covered his face with his hands. He stood near the window for a while, barely able to control his emotions. But suddenly, there was a knock at the door. Jordy even shuddered. Strange, I'm not expecting anyone. Cautiously looking out into the hallway, he asked straight from there, Who's there? An answer was heard from the other side of the door. It's me, Rosita. Jordy, open the door. Let's have tea. He didn't understand what was going on, but he opened the door. Wow, have you been crying? Rosita jokingly asked. Oh, well, let me wipe your face. There, that's better. Don't cry anymore. I'm sorry, Rosita, said Jordy. I've had a bad day. There's no point in having fun or a tea party. I think you'd better visit me another day. But it's my birthday, my 77th birthday. I just wanted to treat my favorite neighbor. And Jordy said guiltily, Oh, right, I've been so stressed that I forgot about everything. First of all, you forgot about your personal life. Don't look at me with those surprised eyes. I know you're not dating anyone. It's about time. You're a big boy, and you need a family. It's no good to live alone. You'll get old before you even notice it. Rosita, what about your family? Because now you should be with your family at your birthday party. Oh, Jordy, you still don't get it. The neighbor began, sighing deeply. My children and grandchildren only come for a couple of hours or less. They have their own things to do, but they are not interested in spending time with an old lady. If my husband were alive, I certainly wouldn't be bored. But now I just sit by the window and watch other people walking with their children or grandchildren. Now I understand, Jordy said sadly. But I'm not destined to be a family man. I am constantly at work, and I spend all my time getting some money for my life. Though... I can't even spend as much money as I used to because they fired me. Oh, poor boy, Jordy, but you shouldn't despair. And why are we talking on the doorstep? Let's go into the kitchen and I'll make some tea. Jordy couldn't refuse that offer. They went into the kitchen together and set the table. It seemed that Rosita wanted to continue the birthday party. She took a piece of cake and put it on a plate in front of Jordy. Eat. Also, there is salad, sausages, and cheese. Eat well, and don't follow my example. I don't eat much because I'm not young anymore, and my appetite is not what it used to be, though it was different when I was young. Tell me, Rosita, does good come back? I mean, it happens that you do something good for a stranger, and then good things happen in your life, too? Of course, Jordy. I helped a lot of people. And then they were happy to help me too. But not many of them visit me lately. 
but I'm not offended. I've done everything I could. Why do you ask about it? You probably gave someone a free ride. Yes, right, Jordy said. I gave a free ride to a girl. She didn't have money to pay. I told her the ride was free and just wished her luck. She was in such a hurry, I didn't really ask her anything. Jordy did not tell the neighbor that the girl was a former inmate and was pregnant. He just didn't know how she would react. Maybe she would blame him. She had enough embarrassment for one day. There was no need to cause any more trouble. Rosita, on the other hand, was unlikely to blame him. She wasn't the sort of person to look for bad sides in someone she respected. The tea party ended around 11 p.m. Jordy saw Rosita off and returned to the kitchen. There were leftovers of salad, a few pieces of cake, and sausages. He put all these treats in the refrigerator. He didn't feel like eating anymore, but he needed to think about what to do next. Jordy took his laptop and began to look through the information about vacancies on job websites. Every company required experience and education, which he did not have. This meant only one thing. He had to work as a handyman, where no special skills were needed. All he had to do was follow the instructions. From that day on, Jordy began a new life. He no longer drove a car, but worked outdoors all the time, and this made him less and less eager to think about the uncertain opportunities. Did he really come to the capital for this kind of life? Thinking about everything he had planned, Jordy suddenly came to the conclusion that he had hardly accomplished anything at all. Yes, he had succeeded in settling in the big city, but what next? What were the next steps? He didn't know that yet because he took a step back and he would have to start from scratch again. He remembered some childhood moments when he had to fight for his freedom of choice. If it were not for cleverness, no one knows where he would be now. For some reason, he wanted to see his parents. But Jordy knew that was impossible because they don't exist. They had abandoned their baby and decided to live without him. It's like a toy store. When you don't like something, you can return it. Jordy tossed and turned at night and slept badly, tormented by the idea that life was all about work and home. There was no room for love to warm his soul. But Rosita was right. We all need to love someone. It's the only thing that can save us from loneliness. It is so hard, especially when you are old. It seems that life has stopped. But his neighbor was not happy either. She said that her children and grandchildren came very rarely and just for a couple of hours. They have their own interests, so they rarely need their grandmother. Such a future frightened Jordy. He didn't want to remain an old, unwanted man. Two weeks passed. Jordy got used to his new job and no longer thought about the fact that he had once been afraid of his evil boss. At the same time, the image of Blanca began to appear in his mind more and more often, but he knew that she was pregnant, and it was unlikely that she would want to share his problems. No, it wasn't worth talking about, much less dreaming about, but the desire to see her won over and gave him food for thought. One day, while waiting for the bus at the bus stop, Jordy saw an old lady walking toward him. She was carrying a heavy bag on her shoulder that hung almost to the ground. The old woman waved at him. Jordy could not believe that it was the same old lady who had said that his life would change and there would be his day soon. When he closed his eyes, he didn't open them for almost a minute. And when he looked in that direction again, he didn't see anyone. He got the feeling that he was hallucinating, but it was impossible. His health was good. Jordy decided he just needed to get some rest and not go out to work on Saturdays. When he got home and fed his cat, he lay down on the couch and fell asleep. But no more than an hour passed when Luna began to meow pitifully. Jordy woke up and looked at her. What are you doing? The cat purred and jumped on the couch. 
As soon as she was near his face, she hissed. Jordy was shocked. Did someone scare you, Luna? Wow, even your fur stood on end. But the cat kept hissing and backing away from the couch. Jordy sat down, and then he heard someone scratching at the door. He felt nervous, just like when he met Blanca. His hands went numb, and his tongue was dry. He couldn't say a word. Jordy got up from the couch and headed for the hallway. Suddenly, the scratching on the door turned into a steady knock. But it was not a loud knock. Probably it was a woman. It must be the neighbor, Rosita. Jordy hurried to open the door. But what was his surprise when he saw Blanca wearing an expensive coat and boots? Hello, do you recognize me? She asked cheerfully. Yes, sure. It is hard to forget you. May I come in, or are you in a bad mood? I'm sorry, I don't feel well, Jordy answered, but let Blanca in. Too many unpleasant things have happened in my life. I don't even want to talk about them. I was sure you had forgotten me. I had to make an effort to find you. I didn't think it would be so easy to get lost in the capital. This is the capital. It's easy to lose anyone here, Jordy said in a more cheerful voice. But you've been away from home for so long, so don't be surprised. Oh, I'm sorry for talking about your past. It's okay, Jordy. Blanca answered and went into the kitchen. Yes, I have to learn to live again, but I'm sure that I will never forget my past. It's so full of dark stains that I won't be able to wash it off in a lifetime. Wait, what are you talking about? Jordy asked in surprise though he already knew what was behind it. About this, Blanca pointed to her round belly. All the secrets and stains are here, and if you have time, I'll tell you. Yes, of course, I just came from work, so I'm in no hurry. Jordy turned on the coffee machine and asked, Maybe you're hungry? No, I went to a restaurant and had dinner there. What, you can't understand why I've changed so dramatically? Where did I get the money to go to a restaurant? To be honest, yes, Jordy answered embarrassedly. The day you almost fell under the wheels of my car, you were wearing old clothes, the wrong size shoes, and had no money. By the way, I hope you didn't rob a bank. And Jordy pointed to her expensive clothes. Blanca laughed and put her hand on his palm. No, there's nothing to worry about. I didn't need to rob a bank. I only took what was mine. There was awkward tension because Blanca's words about her taking something were more like a robbery. And Jordy expected her to say that. I really stole money and bought expensive stuff with it, but at the same time, he knew that it was impossible to do something like that alone with the modern security system, especially for a pregnant woman. To stop this awkward silence, and at the same time to learn as much information about her as possible, Jordy calmly said, It's good you didn't have to do anything illegal. You broke the law once before, and you had to pay for that. By the way, what happened? Why did you end up in jail? Blanca took a mug, took a couple of sips, and began to talk. Well, it's a long story, and I'll start with the fact that I got pregnant by the jail warden. Really? Jordy exclaimed and almost choked. Yes, that's true, but I had to do it. He promised that I could get out on parole. I'm ashamed to say it, but intimacy with him was the only way I could get out of jail. Soon I got pregnant. My boss even took me for an ultrasound, and that's when it showed me that I have twins. Can you imagine? Two boys? Not exactly, but... I can imagine, Jordy answered modestly. It's the first time I've ever heard of an inmate getting pregnant by her warden. Usually, women get there already pregnant or after meetings with their husbands. But why? I mean, you can't love those kids. Blanca tilted her head to the side and became sad. It was obvious that Jordy's words had touched her heart. But he couldn't imagine what was going on in this girl's mind. Their first meeting had shown how vulnerable she was. 
But suddenly, she came to him, and she was different, looked different, and spoke sincerely about her past to a stranger. Jordy, I have no other choice. I had to get out to get revenge. I see. So you got pregnant for nothing but to execute your insidious plan? Wait, don't judge me before you know what happened. Okay, I will not interrupt. Go on, said Jordy, sipping coffee from his mug. That evening, Blanca told him about her difficult fate. She had suffered a lot because her father, who is now deceased, had decided to get married again. Her mother passed away only three years ago, and he had already fallen in love with another woman. Blanca did not discourage him, understanding that her father was an adult and free to decide his own fate. In addition, he was a big businessman and owned many assets. Naturally, many women wanted to become the wife of a wealthy man, and soon, a beautiful woman came into Sergio's life. She was 10 years younger, and she easily captured his heart. Blanca saw that he was crazy about her and did not notice anything around. She also had a small business, and things at the company did not allow her to control the situation. She had to manage her business and household, but everything changed when their son was born. She forced Sergio to get married, they had a wonderful wedding. Jordy put the mug on the table and interrupted her story. Wait, didn't your father know what he was doing? From what you said, he was in his early 50s, and I don't believe that a man of that age could lose his mind. Well, he was perfectly aware of what was going on, except he loved women's attention, which is why he decided to get married again. I tried to stop him, but he didn't want to listen to me. Dad always made his own decisions, and this time, he decided to get married. I'm sorry to interrupt, Jordy said guiltily. It's just that I've had similar problems in my life. Well, not about marriage, but something like that. I never told you I was an orphan. I've never met my parents, and I still don't know where they are or what happened to them. I spent all my childhood in an orphanage. That's where I got my driver's license. It's hard when you don't have loved ones around, Blanca continued. I realized that when I was in jail. I got a ticket to jail because of my stepbrother, Enrique, the son of my father's new wife. I don't even want to say her name. The two of them ruined my life. Jordy realized he needed to take a break. Let's cook something together. I understand that you can afford restaurants now, but I don't have those opportunities. I got fired from the cab company, and I can't make enough money as a handyman. But I can't cook something yummy. Wait, so this is all because of me? Blanca asked with a gasp. You were late that day, and you got kicked out? Well, honestly, my boss was always looking for a reason to fire me. And that incident was just that reason. But my boss didn't like me from the first day and wanted to get rid of me. He hated me from the first days. He thought I was his competitor. Why? Once I dared to tell the CEO what oils are best for cars, and then I offered my ideas several times. The CEO always praised me, not my boss Alvaro. That's why he wanted to get rid of a competitor. Your boss is a bastard, Blanca said. More like an egoist and a fool. But he will regret it. I'll prove to him that he shouldn't have fired me. They cooked dinner together and ate. Jordy noticed that Blanca no longer acted as if she was seeing him for the first time. It was obvious that she trusted him. Looking at her belly, he asked, Are you going to give birth in a municipal hospital or a paid clinic? Now you have such opportunities. By the way, what about your brother? Where is he? You said it was his fault you went to jail? Blanca replied that time will tell, and added, Yeah, that's right. Enrique did that. I trusted him and let him work for my company. I hired him to help with the bookkeeping and human resources. And he didn't do a good job? Jordi asked. He caused tax problems for the company. Not only that, he turned the employees against me. In general, 
He turned out to be a crook and I had to pay for everything. And honestly, I don't regret it at all because I got a priceless experience. What kind of experience, if it's not a secret? I learned to survive in difficult situations. Also, I can distinguish between people according to the principle of good or evil. You know, I went through almost the same school of life when I was in the orphanage, and I think that you and I have similar fates. Stay at my place tonight. You can sleep in the bedroom, and I'll sleep on the kitchen couch. Blanca agreed, especially since she had no intention of leaving. There was a reason she was looking for Jordy. She had liked him the first time they had met, and she decided to find the kind cab driver by all means. But as it turned out, he had been fired because of her, and Blanca, feeling guilty, decided to fix the situation. She saw how reverently he treated the car. Indeed, it was not just a car, but a real friend to him. As she fell asleep, Blanca could already see herself next to Jordy. The only thing left to know was what he thinks about her twins. Her story of how she got pregnant in jail made a deep impression on him. In the morning, she heard dishes rattling. For the first time in years, that noise was not irritating. Blanca just remembered waking up at dawn in jail with her jail cellmates rattling their dishes. But right now, she enjoyed that noise and walked into the kitchen. Good morning, Jordy. Good morning, Blanca. Why are you up so early? I'm making breakfast, so you'll have to wait a bit. I couldn't sleep. I was thinking about us. Blanca said carefully. What do you mean? Jordy asked, pretending like he didn't understand. I didn't tell you everything. There are other things you should know. Wow, so do I have to be even more curious? Jordy asked excitedly. I thought that yesterday you finished with your past and don't want to go back there again. It is true, the past is far behind, Blanca answered, but some things must be done to put an end to it, and that's why I want to ask for your help. I'm sorry it's so sudden, but I really need your help. Great. I'm back to the day we first met, Jordy said cheerfully, putting two plates of scrambled eggs on the table. And it's almost as if I have to go all the way from cab driver to handyman again. Jordy, it's not long until the babies are born. And I need to get back what I've lost. I was talking about how my stepbrother put me in jail. Well, he and his mother got my business. We need to punish them and take my company away from them. I created this business step by step, and I put a lot of effort into it. But now, everything has gone to hell. Blanca cried, and Jordy hugged her. He felt a shiver beneath his hands, and his heart clenched even more tightly. He saw a vulnerable, helpless girl, even though she was rich. If he doesn't help her now, he'll never forgive himself. Running his hand through her hair, Jordy said, All right, I will help you, but I don't know how. Your relatives must be powerful people, and they have connections we can't get through. Blanca took the documents out of her purse and handed them to Jordy. Here is all the money I have in my account. Looking at her with surprise, Jordy asked, Wait, but didn't you say they took everything from you? There's a lot of money here. Yes, that's right. Blanca replied with a heaviness in her voice. They took not only the company, but also my father. He died while I was in jail. The news came when he was already buried. I wasn't even allowed to say goodbye to him. Jordy hugged her again, but this time he kissed her. He did it in a burst of emotion, and Blanca responded. She pressed against him with her whole body, as much as she could with her big belly. They stood for almost a minute, not letting each other out of their tight embrace. It looked as if two loving people had met after a long separation. This time, there was a spark of mutual feeling between them, and Jordy, not realizing it, said languidly, I like you, Blanca. I like you too, Jordy, and I knew from the first day that we would be together. The day we met, you reacted so calmly to the fact that you had a former inmate in your car. 
What was I supposed to do? Yell and chase you out of the car? I don't know, but usually people avoid or look contemptuously at those who come from jail. I don't care. I'll never reproach you. Let's think about how we can get your company back. Here, I withdrew some of the money, but not all of it. Blanca pointed to the numbers on the papers and checks. I needed new clothes and pay to people who found you. Jordy suddenly thought that Blanca visited his former boss. And to clarify this matter, he asked an intriguing question. Didn't Alvaro help you with this, by any chance? I don't know who you're talking about, but if it's so important to you, Blanca answered sharply, Other people helped me, but I couldn't have expected more from them. They did their best. Now we have to talk to the lawyers and force my stepmother and her son to give me my company back. Jordi agreed to help Blanca, and he didn't expect any gratitude in return. It was now a matter of honor for him. He knew what betrayal was like, and what it was like to be humiliated. Together, they found the most experienced lawyer in the city. And after a long negotiation, he gave his word that he would help solve this problem. Jordi also learned that shortly before his death, Blanca's father had opened an account in her name and transferred almost all of his savings there. Blanca's stepmother didn't know about that, but if she found out, she would surely force Sergio to give her access to that bank account. So the father took care of his daughter's future, but he couldn't help her to avoid imprisonment. Perhaps this was his way of trying to redeem himself? That's why Blanca decided to go all in. She knew that this was the only way to get the company back and clear her reputation. Jordy tried his best. He even had to quit his new job. He kept an eye on what the stepmother and her son were doing. Enrique lived a luxurious life. He had no problems with money, for the business was successful. Watching the way this guy behaved, Jordy identified several things. First and foremost was that he was relaxed. He had a lack of vigilance and a reluctance to do anything serious. The stepmother was different. She supervised the company and skillfully managed the whole process. It was as if she had been in business all her life. Jordy told Blanca what he had seen. Good, so they are not waiting for me to show up, she said with a sly look. We must act decisively so that they have no time to do something. I'm sure they have backups for emergencies. You know better than me, Blanca, Jordy said. I just want you to be all right. The hired lawyers prepared the documents for the trial, and in the meantime, Blanca and Jordy worked on their relationship. A few days later, they moved into their new apartment with Luna. Blanca withdrew money from the account and spent it to buy the family home. Neither of them had any doubt that this was the beginning of their life together. The words of the old woman at the bus stop and his neighbor Rosita were prophetic. Jordy found his way in this difficult and winding life. Fate thanked him for his kindness. Since childhood, he tried to help everyone, even though sometimes it was not easy. These qualities made him a strong man. That's why he was not afraid of difficulties, and he wasn't afraid to help Blanca, though he knew how it might end. Soon, Blanca bought him a fancy car. At first, Jordi did not want to accept such a gift, but then he agreed, saying that the time would come and he would surely repay. Taking on the role of her assistant, Jordi was in contact with the lawyers. At some point, they told him that Amaya, Blanca's stepmother, and Enrique got nervous. Apparently, they sensed danger or someone told them that the true owner of the business was coming. Jordi told Blanca about it. As you can see, your actions didn't go unnoticed. Well, they must be prepared to be punished for the crime they committed. By the way, how do you like the car? Thank you, my love. It's the best gift I've ever received. Jordi answered and pulled Blanca close to him. She felt warmth all over her body and rested her head on his shoulder. And suddenly, she heard Jordi whispering, stroking her belly. My boys, I'll see you soon. 
Blanca realized that Jordi definitely would not abandon her and her future children. She hadn't made the wrong choice. He was the right man, and no matter what other difficulties she would have to overcome, the main thing is that they are together now, and nothing will separate them. But the wicked stepmother, Amaya, started acting. She sent her beloved son, Enrique, to Blanca's apartment, but he was unlucky because Jordi managed to intercept him. They ran into each other right outside the entrance. Jordi immediately recognized Blanca's stepbrother. Well, hello, where are you going, to see your sister? Excuse me, do I know you? Enrique said nervously. Jordi could see that he had not expected such a meeting, and therefore he tried to ignore him and keep going. We don't know each other yet, although I have heard a lot about you, and I'm not happy with what you and your mother have done. What the hell is going on here? Let me go. Enrique screamed and tried to run into the building, but Jordi grabbed him by the collar and pushed him against the wall. Listen, bastard. I know what you did to Blanca. That's not just meanness, it's a crime. At this time, people came out of the building and Enrique started to talk to them. Jordi reacted with lightning speed, punched him lightly in the stomach, and took him to his car. Now there's no one to get in our way. Tell me who told you to set Blanca up and send her to jail. And don't try to lie. I'll find out the truth anyway. If you lie, you will regret it. I'm not kidding. Enrique nodded nervously and with a shiver in his voice, began to tell the story. It was my mother's idea. She wanted to become the sole owner of Sergio's business, but Blanca got in her way, so she asked me to make the businessman's daughter disappear for a while. And you couldn't think of anything else but to put her in jail? Jordy asked angrily. What was I supposed to do? Kill her? It's a good thing you were smart enough not to do that. What else do you know? Nothing, I swear. Enrique whimpered. I don't believe it. Do you know why? Why? Because Blanca's father died so suddenly. Don't you think it's strange? Well, he was old. Maybe his heart couldn't take it. Enrique said and looked at Jordi. Seriously? Do you expect me to believe that? He was only 54 years old, and Sergio never complained about his health. I already found out some information, as you can see. I wasn't idle. I checked all the information about you and your mother. I'm watching you. Don't even think you can fool me. At this moment, his phone rang. It was Blanca. Hello, darling. I'll be right there. She was screaming and crying. I'm going into labor and I have to go to the hospital right away. Jordi looked at Enrique and said angrily, Go, I'll let you go for now, but soon your sweet life will be over. Enrique got out of the car and rushed away. In the meantime, Jordi went up to the apartment, assessed the situation, and called an ambulance. He went with Blanca to the maternity hospital, but they would not let him in. He waited for the doctor who could tell him what was wrong with her and how she was feeling. Half an hour later, the obstetrician showed up. It's good that you came to the hospital right away. Your wife will stay here for a while. It was a false contraction, but she will give birth soon. Doctor, but the delivery should be in more than two weeks. I understand your worries, but nature dictates when your children are born, and it's great you're having twins. You should be happy and thank God for this generous gift. Thank you, but they're not... Jordy wanted to say that the children are not his biological sons, but he stopped himself. Besides, the doctor considered them husband and wife. Somehow, everything turned upside down in his head, and he hurried outside. He saw an open window in one of the rooms. Blanca looked out. She looked at Jordy and said loudly, I love you! With a deep sigh, Jordy replied, I love you too, you and our babies. Can you imagine? The doctor decided that you and I are married. 
and you didn't like what he said? Blanca asked. I loved it. And I even know what to do about it. Wait, don't go away. Stay with me a little longer. She asked and leaned against the window frame. I didn't have time to do anything. I have to get on with my life and get my company back. Or maybe we should just leave it as it is? No way, Blanca. Take some rest, get ready for the delivery, and I'll take care of everything else. After these words, Jordy got into the car and drove to the lawyer's office. They were already waiting for him. Jordy, take a seat. The lawyer invited him. Yes, thank you. We have everything ready. We can start the trial tomorrow. And one more thing. Amaya led the company into bankruptcy. I can't believe it, Jose. Jordy exclaimed. So we did it all in vain? No, not in vain. I found the right people and they stopped the bankruptcy process. I think Blanca will get the company back to a normal state. Yes, she'll have to invest to fix the situation, but given her financial capabilities, I don't think that would be a problem. You're right, Jose, but Blanca can't be involved in this process yet. She's in the maternity ward and the birth could start any minute. I got it, Jordy. So we will report everything to you, especially since you are familiar with all the documents. After meeting Jordy, Enrique immediately told about it to his mother, and they even wanted to report it to the police. But they changed their mind because they were summoned to court. In addition, they were warned that it would be a serious case, and it's better to solve everything peacefully now than to go to jail later. Amaya ignored these warnings and thought that she was free to decide what to do with the company. But her son began to pack his bags. He realized that he would not be left alone and that they would get all the information. So to minimize the negative consequences for himself, he took the risk of confessing everything. He called Jordi and asked for a meeting. During the conversation, Enrique told him that his mother had poisoned Sergio but he didn't see it himself. But when Sergio passed away, Amaya once said that her medicine worked and the old money bag finally died. All this information immediately got to the police and they arrested the woman. However, they didn't have any direct evidence and so far she was only given a sentence for fraud. For the cooperation with law enforcement and the honest confession, Enrique stayed under house arrest, but it was temporary because after the trial, he faced real imprisonment. It took several days to find everything out, and during this time, Jordi visited Blanca every day. He could no longer imagine himself without her, and she was glad someone needed her. Once the nurse even allowed them to spend some time alone, just the two of them, and there Jordi, standing on one knee, proposed to Blanca. It was so heartwarming that Blanca just couldn't say no. She said it was a real blessing for her. She began to kiss Jordy and then suddenly screamed. The contraction started again and the water seemed to be breaking. Immediately, all the nursing staff arrived and she was taken to the delivery room. Jordy went downstairs and waited. He sat patiently for three hours Finally, the doctor came out and said, Congratulations, you have boys. At that moment, Jordy cried and hugged the doctor. I am so happy, I have two sons. Then he said it again, but so loudly that all the patients in the maternity ward seemed to hear it. Even Blanca smiled when she heard it. She was lying in the room with her two babies next to her. She looked at them and tears streamed down her face. But they were tears of joy. The next day, Jordy came to the law office again. Jose told him that Amaya was accused of fraud and would not be released anytime soon. Enrique, on the other hand, might receive a suspended sentence. But most importantly, the lawyer added, we can get Blanca's company back. Now we're preparing the documents and I think that in a week or two, everything will be finished. In the meantime, congratulations, you are now happy parents of two little ones. And may you all be well. 
Thank you, Jose. But I know that's why I'm saying that everything will be fine. Jordy realized that the lawyer knows everything, and he would certainly keep it a secret, especially since they had become close friends during this time. A week passed and Blanca was getting ready to be discharged. Jordy came to meet her and bought flowers in advance. He was waiting near his car. A minute later, a cab pulled into the yard and Alvaro got out. He met Jordy's gaze and said loudly, Long time no see, buddy. Are you working as a cab driver again? And who trusted you with such an expensive car? Good to see you, Alvaro. Jordy laughed. This is my own car, and your car needs to be repaired. Is that your car? No, I don't believe you. It's just impossible. And in the meantime, Blanca showed up with the babies. Sweetheart, I'm sorry to keep you waiting. Jordy handed her the flowers and took the little ones in his arms. I can wait for you forever, my love. Jordy kissed Blanca, turned to Alvaro, and said sarcastically, How did you get a promotion from being a boss to a simple cab driver? He wouldn't listen any further, though Alvaro mumbled something. They didn't care about him anymore, because the most delightful thing happened in their lives. A week later, Blanca came to the lawyers herself and thanked them for the successful outcome of the case. Her company had been returned to the owner. Jose did his best to complete the paperwork as quick as possible. He also was a defense attorney at the trial and provided evidence of how Amaya and her son Enrique had fraudulently taken over Blanca's business. She cleaned her reputation and stopped the bankruptcy process. She decided to run the company together with Jordi. And in order not to lose his driving experience, he agreed to be her driver. That's even better, you don't have to hire someone else. All right, my love, but only as a part-time job, and you're my assistant the rest of the time. Amaya got the maximum sentence under this article and went to jail. Enrique was found guilty as an accomplice, but he cooperated with the investigator and wrote a confession, so he got a suspended sentence. No one ever heard from him again. He went to the countryside and decided to run a farm there. Soon, Blanca and Jordi got married. The words of the old lady at the bus stop came true, and it was good that Jordi did not give up on his happiness. Both Rosita and the doctor from his maternity ward were invited to the wedding. After all, they had no one else to invite. Blanca was left without parents, and Jordi was an orphan, so they had the same fate. After the babies were born, Jordi officially became their father and gave them his last name. He insisted on it, saying that it was not right for them to be raised in an incomplete family. Blanca did not object, because she saw her future only with Jordi. She was incredibly strong and patient. She had endured so much and had not failed. It wasn't easy, but they got the company out of the financial crisis. Now it is fully functioning and profitable, but they had to fire everyone and hire a new team. They were soaked with hatred for Blanca and they could not stay. Jordi recruited the new employees himself. He interviewed everyone in person. Blanca hadn't forgotten about her father and found time to visit his grave. He was buried next to her mother. Blanca stood near the tombstone for a long time and cried. Fate was cruel to her, but it fixed the mistakes she had made. Or maybe it was the parents from the other side that helped their daughter to survive and to find love. If you're enjoying it as well, leave a like and subscribe to the channel.